some examples of success stories. The Mazda Miata is the, the biggest selling car in its class. And when it was going to, 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 just before release, they did some testing and they found there was a problem with it. They had people do test drives just before release and they discovered it was too quiet. It needs to be loud in order to be the muscle car that it was, wants to be. Um, another case study. A website had a registration button. And then they changed it. One label to continue instead of register. $300 million later in a year. And so 45% sales increase and just because they took that forced registration out because people don't like to register. Listen to your users. You could do that before you lose 95% of them, right? Uh, another one, Expedia had a, people were coming to buy their, their travel, pay for their travel uh, plans, and there was a field in there which was optional. That was called company. And people were making a mistake, having an error and leaving in the middle of the purchase process. They took that one optional field completely off and made $12 million. How about this? How many of you have a Zune? Yes. All right. No. How many of you know somebody who has a Zune? All right. Exactly. How many Zunes are still used today? Three. Okay, three in the world. <laughs> and then we have this, right? And, but of course, the difference is not just the device. It's actually the whole ecosystem that goes with that. And that's your experience, right? That big E experience. How do we do it? I want to show you something which I'm calling the five D's of user experience. It's the cycle of discover, define, design, develop, deploy. And this is something that uh, depending on what kind of organization you work in, if you're a startup and you're doing lean or if you're doing agile or if you're a really huge, slow moving organization, there's different things that fit into those sections. Doing it right versus doing it wrong, we've seen some examples of both cases. And I want to show you some examples of the kinds of things, artifacts, and tools that methods that come out of some of these processes. Understanding your user, for example, this is a customer journey. Really knowing what your users are going through if you're trying to design or upgrade a new, your system. Um, getting the vision right and communicating it and iterating it. This is Food Spotting's vision, the original vision that they came up with at the inception of the, of the concept of the company. And then recently, actually two weeks ago, they were just bought for $10 million. Getting the vision right, communicating it, sharing it, making it explicit in a simple, easy to understand method allows you to get buy-in, allows you to share your vision and validate it and so on. Samsung versus iPhone. One billion dollars lawsuit that Samsung lost. This was one of the uh, evidences from that lawsuit. They had a competitive analysis of function for function devices. Device, for example, here is the memo and they, they were doing analysis on the iPhone and comparing it to the S1 and the memo here from the memo, you cannot make, here there's nothing active. Here you can actually make phone calls, web calls, emails, straight from the memo, whereas in the Samsung, they didn't have that option. So that was documented. This is something you can do. A competitive analysis is something you should do in the beginning if you're trying to enter a market so that you know what you're dealing with. Here's another example. In the contacts. Um, in the iPhone, they have a little carrot here which tells you that, or it's called a chevron, I think. The chevron that tells you that, hey, there's something to click on. On this side, there's nothing that tells you there's more to be found. And so that's another note in their analysis. You know, so is Apple's always so, so clever and brilliant and, you know, f free of 
Usability errors? No, they're not. Um, lots of issues. If you look at iTunes right now, uh, a lot of my DJ friends were screaming in the last release of iTunes because things changed so drastically. Everybody lost their playlists or it was just a nightmare. Um, this is another example. Here's your, uh, here are your apps and here's your update of that you need to update your apps. Is anybody ever going to notice that? I never knew until I read this article by Jacob Nielsen, which was providing the analysis like, oh, so that's what, what that's all about. Another example of usability challenges. Anybody ever seen one of these uh, cards where you scratch it off and then you have no idea what those numbers are or you just scratch them off and how do you deal with that? And why do we have to have ones and eyes in these things? And why can't they use a font where you can actually tell an O from a zero? Why is that rocket science? And what about this experience, you know? We're in Canada here, right? We've all seen this. Oh yeah, you can't get it, you know? How many iTunes accounts do you need to have, right? One for the US, one for Canada. You have to remember which one is where. When you do upgrades, it's, it's a nightmare, right?